Welcome. I have no idea what's going on, guys. This this could be a major fiasco. To Lighting for Profits, your number one source for all things landscape lighting. Powered by Emery Allen. From lighting design, install, sales, and marketing. And I'm just like, okay, is this where I get beat up in front of my friends? Like, what's going to happen? We discuss everything you need to know to start and grow a successful landscape lighting business. That's what I like. Now, here is your host, Ryan Lee. What up, what up? Welcome to the number one landscape lighting show in the world. I don't even know if that's true, guys. Half the stuff I say, I'm like, this this might come back to haunt me. But uh, we're the number one landscape lighting show in Lehigh, Utah. I know that. So uh, thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate your support. As always, if you have not, please go and help a brother out. Go subscribe to the podcast. Um, I'm not even sure what it does. I just hear other people saying it. So I'm like, you know what? Go subscribe. Hit the like button, whatever. Like, I don't really care, but um, do subscribe. I think it does help me, you know, get in front of more people. So um, it's not a popularity contest, but it kind of is. So uh, go do it. Go help me out. Um, and uh, we'll get the show started. So if you guys are looking to start or grow your landscape lighting business, you're definitely in the right place. Today, we are going to be joined by the one, the only Mr. Greg Matthews. And you'll notice by my shirt here, uh, it says... Go Greg or go home. And it's, I don't, it's probably not the best, but like this shirt, I'm telling you, it looks just like him. So if I could like zoom in more on it, whatever, you could see his eyes and his face. And it's, it's pretty much an exact replica of him. So, um, Greg has a, uh, a big time influencer in the landscape lighting space, uh, and does major, major projects, which is why we called the, uh, the, the, the episode, uh, fishing for whales. Um, he, he's not here in Utah fishing for trout a lot. I mean, he, he is catching the wells out there. And so we're going to, uh, hopefully hack his brain and find out exactly what he's doing, how he's doing it. Um, and, uh, hopefully some of you guys can take away, uh, some things from that and model his success. So like usual, we're here to educate and motivate to help you dominate. So, um, thanks for being here, Mr. Mike Long. I think it's the real Mike Long, not sure, but. Uh, Thanks for being here, Mike Long. Um, Guys, um, we are going to continue. I I actually came up with another question uh, for this week's gift card giveaway. So make sure to stick around, and we're just going to basically bribe you, give away free money. All you have to do is answer the question first. In fact, Greg, who's behind the scenes right now, he's in the green room, which is not green. It's more like a a blue, a tillish, till uh, uh, color in his office, but uh, he almost won last week. Uh, it was like one second behind uh, Ryan Jaso. So, um, but we're going to be giving that away just here in a few minutes. And um, again, Greg Matthews with Luxury Illumination. He's based out of West Palm Beach, but also has multiple locations. So we're going to talk about that, where his other locations are, how he got started and what he's doing right now to expand. So make sure you stick around. Uh, Next week, guys, next week, I'm going to be in Louisville. I think that's how you say it, Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, what are you what are you doing next week? If you're not doing anything, I'm going to fly in Tuesday night. I'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, flying out late Friday night. And I'm going to be chilling in the Emory Allen booth at the uh, it used to be called the GIE, GIE plus or something like that. But now it's called the Equip Expo, the Equip Expo in Louisville, Kentucky. I know several manufacturers, distributors are going to be there. And so I'll be chilling in Emory Allen booth, which is 27047, 27047. Yes, there are that many booths. This show is huge. Um, It's like you just, I mean, like it's huge. So come find me. It's like, where's, where's Ryan? Come find me and let's hang out. Um, I'll be uh, visiting all the other lighting booths as well. Uh, So come say hi, come find me if you can uh, next week at the Equip Expo. So, and on that note, by the way, uh, since I will be traveling next Tuesday night, um, I'll be on a plane at this time, 5 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to change the time so we can still do a live show. Next week, uh, we've got an awesome guest, Mr. Dan Plata. Um, He's going to be joining me, but we've bumped the time up to 12 noon, 12 noon next week. So hopefully you can join me live. If not, make sure you pick it up on the replay on YouTube or Facebook or on any of your favorite podcast platforms that you're going to go subscribe to right now and give me a five-star review. All right. Don't forget about that five-star review. I think that helps probably too. I can't imagine it hurting. So um, before we uh, get started, I want to thank uh, Emery Allen for uh, 
their their support you know uh they've been uh with us for quite a while now and uh you guys know you know how this works you know a fixture is only as good as the light of the excuse me as good as the source of light inside it and this light source is what your customers and future customers will ultimately see at night and will result in thousands of dollars in return business for you along with glowing referrals so it's important to deal with quality components, you guys. Emory Allen believes every lighting professional should have access to a light source engineered from the ground up, dedicated to high performance when you need it the most. And at the end of the day, we've been saying this for a while now, it's what's on the inside that counts. So make sure you're choosing high quality bulbs, lamps, whatever you want to call them, and take advantage of Emory Allen's world-class customer service and 10% off your first order all you have to do is email the man, Tom G, at emeryallen.com for more info. Let him know you heard about us, or about him on uh, Lighting for Profits. He'll get you their discounted, their lowest discounted contractor pricing available. Just email him, Tom G, at emeryallen.com. All right. I don't know. I just found that song. I was like, I'm just going to play it in the background. Was that good or would you rather just me read it? I don't know. Tom, are you there? Let me know. Um, all right, guys. So again, we got Greg Matthews coming up. Go Greg or go home, which by the way, we're going to talk about where this saying came from, where this t-shirt came from, why, like why I'm wearing the shirt, uh, why I wear it every day. Uh, I, I didn't mean to say that out loud, but, um, Greg, Greg goes big, you know, he, he goes big and, uh, in a, in a major way. So, uh, again, you're going to want to, you're going to want to probably not just pay attention, but take notes because he's figured out a lot of things that others have not. And, uh, luckily he's willing to come on here and uh, share a lot of those things with us. So, but before we have him on, I want to share with you real quick um, what was going to be my top five sales tips. But as you guys know, I was like, oh, I'm going to do my top five sales tips of all time, whatever. And then I was like, yeah, that's hard to do because I started writing them out. I was like, actually, I'm going to give more than that. I always like to over deliver. So I decided, you know what? We'll do top 10, top 10 sales tips. Uh, and partially because it was really hard to consolidate it down to five. And I like to over deliver. All right. So number one is not anywhere near what probably what you think, right? Number one has actually nothing to do with the actual sell. It has to do with mindset. And why this is so important is we're going to talk about it. So the, the first sales tip, the number one tip is be, be convinced of the big three. So here's the big three. Number one, people need landscape lighting. A lot of you guys think that people, eh, it's in a luxury item, you know, they take it or leave it or whatever. I, I literally am convinced, you know, I've joined my own cult. I believe, and I know that people need landscape lighting. Um, why do I believe that? It's because I've had so much experience with people that regretted not having landscape lighting, whether it was for safety because someone fell and got hurt, whether it was security because their house got robbed while they were out of town and it looked dark and it looked vacant and it looked like an easy target whether it was because someone was struggling with mental health and if they would have had lighting in their backyard, they could have come back and had a sanctuary to relax and rewind in. I know that people need landscape lighting. Okay, so be convinced that people need landscape lighting. People need landscape lighting from you, okay, not from anybody else. You are the one in your area that they need landscape lighting from, okay? They need landscape lighting from you. And the third one of the big three is people need landscape lighting from you today. Not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, like today. There is a sense of urgency about it because if they don't get landscape lighting from you today, then they're probably going to get it from someone else and they're going to have a miserable experience or they're not going to get it at all and they're going to fall and get hurt. Their house is going to get broken into. They're going to suffer from mental illness. Like there's all these things that we're solving, these problems that we're solving for them. So when you are convinced that people need landscape lighting from you today, your sales begin to skyrocket because you find out that actually you're not selling anything. You don't, you're not a salesperson at this point. You're a helper. You're a guide. You're an advisor. And all you're doing is helping people get what they didn't even know was possible, right? But it's something, you're just helping them get what they want, right? Um, some of you have probably heard my analogy. You know, like, If your grandma needed oxygen, would you just be like, like she needed oxygen today or she was going to die, right? You have this oxygen. You're like, Grandma, please just take this oxygen. Oh, no, I'm good. I, you know what? Actually, I need to talk to some others. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to get some bids or I'm going to, you know, maybe, maybe tomorrow or I'm going to think about it. Um, if you were convinced that your grandma needed oxygen from you today, you'd probably ask her a couple more questions. 
you'd probably spend some more time trying to convince her. You'd probably uh, do what you could to help her make the right decision to get the oxygen, right? Uh, that's kind of morbid, but still, uh, if you love your grandma, then go sell some lights today, okay? That's really what I'm getting at. Um, and that's the thing. This is all about belief. So if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect others to believe in you, right? So that's just number one. I got to start hurrying up here because we got to get Greg Matthews on in just a few minutes, guys. That's number one. The number two sales tip, answer the phone every time. And now most people are like, well, yeah, we answer the phone. Well, do you answer it every time? Like if I were to just do random calls at different times, would you answer the phone? Does someone answer the phone? How are you answering the phone? You've got to answer every time. I've missed out, especially early on when it was just me answering the phone. I was in a tree. I couldn't answer the phone. Like I missed out on countless opportunities to over deliver. You know, I probably missed opportunities in general, but even the people that did agree to meet with me, they were already turned off because they had now, now we were playing phone tag just from the very initial. So um, you want to make sure you start off on the right foot. Number three, pre qualify. So when you do answer the phone, you got to be asking some questions and make sure that you're even wanting to, to go meet with this person. You know, especially if you're newer, you're just so happy that the phone rang and someone's like, hey, we want to quote, just run out there, or whatever. Um, and this is really hard to do because you are so anxious to, to go get your first you know, job. Or maybe if you had a slow spurt, you're like, you know what, let's not pre-qualify. But pre-qualifying not only helps you to make sure you're in front of the right people, but it also sets you up for success when you go and do the sell because you're asking key things and you're finding out problems. And when you find out problems, now you have something to solve when you get there, right? So it's not just a script to just say because someone told you to pre-qualify. It's much more than that. You need to be asking uh, smart questions and writing down the answers and paying attention so you can reference that later on. Um, you'd be surprised how, how important it is to find out the lead source. Hey, how'd you hear about us? You know, if they say, you know, uh, John Smith or whatever, well, when they're at the end of the sale going, well, we're just not sure and we want to think about it, you can reference, hey, you know what? John Smith felt the same way and remind them that they got referred by John Smith. And John Smith does his homework. This guy, he put us through the ringer. He got a bunch of bids, everything else, right? So you can use the pre-qualification process later on in your sales presentation. Notice we haven't even gotten to the sale yet. Number four, follow up before the appointment to confirm. So again, you're just setting the stage up for later, showing them that you are organized, you're polished, you're professional, you're confirming the appointment with them. This shows them that you're, you care, but it also makes sure that you're not wasting your time when you show up and they're not there. Number five, show up early. This should be common sense, but it's not. So many show up late. You're trying to pack your day so tight, trying to get you know 15 hours worth of work done in 10 hours, and it's just not going to happen. So make sure you give yourself time for uh, allow for traffic and drive time and everything else. Make sure you show up early. Number six, this is when we finally get to the sales presentation. So those first five, I was like, wait, I've, I'm already at five. I better do 10. Uh, number six, ask questions. This is your opportunity. Again, we're not selling, guys. We're just problem solvers, right? And so we're, we're helping people. We're guiding them. And we can't help them. We can't guide them if we don't know what the problem is, if we don't know what the, their pain points are. So asking these questions is an opportunity for you to actually create pain. I know that may sound a little bit weird, but that's what we're doing. We're creating pain so that we can provide a solution to them at the end. And uh, number seven is trial closes along the way. Trial closes along the way. This is basically a trial close would be a question that gets them to say yes. Does that make sense? And so I just did that. You know, if you're watching live, I said, does that make sense? And then I nod my head. Naturally, when you start doing that, people tend to start to agree with you. Have you ever seen that before? And you're just asking questions that get people to say yes over and over and over. It sounds weird. And it is, but believe it or not, it works. Are you with me? All right. So those are examples of trial closed questions where are you with me? Does that make sense? Uh, wouldn't that be nice? Like those types of things. And as you're nodding, you'll see they start nodding. And then it's almost comical the first time because you're like, I can't believe they're nodding. He said they were going to nod. They're nodding. Does that make sense? All right. Number eight. Uh, so number eight is, a, is, is a, there's two versions of or two parts of number eight. There's three ways that people buy, it's kind of three ways that people that we sell, right? Number one is we sell on emotion. So number eight is sell on emotion. And think of this as like a status increase. Like, 
why do people build these giant homes? Why do they build their pools? Why do they do their landscaping and get it manicured? And why do they get their lighting? Okay, it's, it's you know, obviously for safety, security, mental health, all those things, but it's also for status. They want to feel like, you know what? We've made it. We've done this. We're keeping up with these guys or we're ahead of them. It's about status. And so when you think about emotion, you're not necessarily talking the specs of like the light and how many lumens or anything like that. It's more about what you're creating. So showing pictures and the before and after. And this is why test drives and demos are so effective is because it gets people involved emotionally. And about 50% of your sales are going to be done based on emotion. And these are people that just buy on emotion. They were going to go to the, uh, they, you know, they, they're going on Saturday just to look for a car. They're, they're, they're not going to buy. They're just going to test drive a couple cars. And before you know it, a couple test drives later, they're walking out of there. They've signed the contract. They've bought the car. They took it home. And it wasn't even in their intention because it felt good. It smelled good. It drove good. It was fast. Got their adrenaline going. And they bought on emotion. So the same thing happens with landscape lighting. Um, number nine, uh, give options. Now, uh, this could be design options. This could be fixture options, um, uh, price points, stuff like that. And I know, I know probably like half of you guys are going to disagree here, but listen, Americans want freedom, right? Like that's probably one thing that we can agree on at least like let's agree at least that Americans want freedom. And so they want to choose. And so if you're really, really good, they'll choose the option that you want them to choose. And that's the trick here because you don't want to give them like 10 options or anything like that, but you want to give them a few options so that they feel like they're able to make an educated choice. But the trick is here, it's like, you're like a magician. You're, you're, you're guiding them to choose the option that you know they're going to choose anyway. So it checks both boxes of one, I'm the professional. They're going to do what I want to do because I am a pro, but also I'm allowing them to think that it was their idea. A little bit of inception, a little bit of magic, and you actually get them to choose what you want. And then finally, number 10, uh, we talked about on number eight, how there's a few different ways people buy. Number 10, you need to back up that sale with logic. So that would be like hitting on those points of, you know, this does make sense to get lighting. Uh, not only does it look good and we feel like we're better than our neighbors now, but man, the safety element, like now no one's going to get hurt on our property and it's so secure. Like the lights automatically turn on. So if we're out late at night, it looks like we're home. That's awesome. It's going to help me feel better mentally, right? So those are the logical reasons why someone would want to buy and invest in landscape lighting. And then the fear, fear is the third one. So it's basically emotion, logic, and fear. And fear isn't like, you know, getting a gun out or a bat or something like that and hitting it like, so you're going to make a decision. Um, it's more like scarcity and urgency. So this would be um, something like, hey, just so you know, we're booked out six weeks. Just so you know, we're booked out six months. If, if you want to move forward with this, we'll be willing to throw in a six months of maintenance or whatever it is, right? But you need to give them something to create scarcity and urgency. This is why so many people succeed in the Christmas light industry because it's not hard because there's so much fear. There's so much urgency. There's only a little bit of time. You can kind of charge whatever price you want and even be a bad business owner and you can get jobs because there's only so much time, right? And that, that FOMO, the fear of missing out, uh, leads people to, to act quickly on Christmas lights. All right. So that's the top 10 guys. And, uh, it was going to be top five, then it was top 10. And then, you know what? I'm like, now I really have to over deliver because there was one more. So here's the bonus. If you're still with me, here's the bonus for the top 10 sales tips of at least these, the, at least this week. Uh, here's the bonus after you do all that stuff and you've done it right. You have to ask for the sale. Okay, don't be afraid of this. I know a lot of people are. I've seen people give excellent presentations. Um, they've done everything right. They're organized, they're polished. And then they're just kind of like, they don't know what to do at the end. They don't know how to close the sale. And it's a simple question. It's which option do you think would work best for you? Um, you could come up with your own. There's a lot of different ways to ask for the sale, but something like that would be a great way to ask for the sale. And just remember, you're their guide. You are the professional. Help them make the right decision. Right. And don't make it awkward because it's awkward if you don't close the sale. Um, but if you can kind of keep the conversation going, lead them to the spot where they're going to choose what you want to choose and then offer that up. Which do you think would work best for you? That's called closing the sale. So don't be afraid of that, guys. That's my bonus tip for the top 10 uh, sales tips of the week. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. If it was, let me know in the uh, comments. And uh, if you're listening to the podcast later, just shoot me an email and say that was helpful. <laughs> By then, I may not even know what you're talking about, but you can still say it.
Um, yes, we're going to, I'm going to stop jawing and put Greg Gorkin. I don't know what that means, but I think I know what it means. So, uh, let's do it guys. Let's, uh, welcome our guests. Let me find the music. Let's do the stuff and get going. You with me? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Mr. Greg Matthews. What's going on? What's up, man? Good to see you. You too. Thanks for being here, man. Um, you know, people were giving me a hard time. They're like, you know what? Get him off the show. We just we just want Greg. Greg. Yeah. Greg. Greg. I mean, I'm kind of already there on your shirt, so you're living through me already. Yeah, it's like, dude, back off. I'm wearing a shirt that says go Greg or go home, you know? So, so I was a little surprised. Like, where's the go Greg or go home shirt? So we have to give uh, full credit to Wes Jackson for the phrase. And uh, that was actually created during the opening party. So we, we get some stuff through Jackson Lighting out of uh, Texas. We you know get quite a few brands from them. And he knows how we kind of work. And at the party, he said, well, it's pretty much go Gregor, go home. And that's where the whole phrase came from. And then Ryan Lee was nice enough to send me a few shirts and a bobblehead as well, which now sits at my desk for the go Gregor, go home. I'm get a kick out of it every day. Love it, man. That's awesome. Well, I mean, it was quite the party. I mean, there was pre-parties, party parties, post-parties. Um, it, it was insane. I, it's hard to believe to me that was only this – that was in January. That was less than a year ago. Yeah, we had uh, about 160 people from almost 20 states come. So, And that was like towards the end of COVID whateverness still. So I'm sure we would have had more, but that was a good time. I'll do it again in a few years. Yeah, that was a blast. That was my first ever landscape lighting live. It was your grand opening. We decided to kind of partner up together and do it at the same time. And uh, I don't think there was any regret on either side. That was that was quite the uh, event. Yes, we had. Um, so you had there was a flamethrower, uh, live band, food truck, lighting manufacturers, audio manufacturers, and uh, a lot of alcohol, as I recall. C cigar roller. <laughs> Uh, it's we a had a cigar roller, the artist forging a metal in the back. That's um, right. Probably some other stuff that we shouldn't talk about. I have no idea. <laughs> that was all the stuff that made the video. And then we sent the videographer home and, you know, that the remains uh, that, that remains closed at this point. Yes. So um, I want to ask you about about life, man. I mean, it's been a little bit since we hung out. I saw you at Light Fair in Vegas. Um and, uh, you know, we had your, that grand opening, but how, how has that new showroom been for you? Uh, it's been great. Um, we're a little bit different company than most. So even having three or four clients come in and utilize it, we've had more than that, but pays for the showroom already, you know, the size projects that we do. Um, we've had a couple of celebrities in here, a couple of really wealthy people, designers I actually hosted an entire landscape architectural firm here and at my house over a weekend. So that really helps them, you know, sell our designs, add more lights to their projects, makes us do the install. So that alone has paid for it. Um, and it's been great all around. And I would suggest a lot of people doing it, depending on how you run your business. If you're doing night demos or something like that, that really wouldn't be a benefit to you. We don't do night demos. So all of our stuff is, you know, based on portfolio work and showing it off and looking at fixtures and that kind of stuff during the day. I like aiming lights at night, not setting them up. Yeah. Well, you're right. It's not for everybody, but when you are dealing with that higher end clientele, uh, it certainly is nice. It's worked out for you because you do have a place to bring them. And, you know, I mean, I can only imagine someone that just had a warehouse with like inventory, like, and if someone's like, yeah, can we come by? It's like, yeah, come on by. We have a showroom. Here's some boxes of lights and here's our office and it has a computer in it, you know? <laughs> here's a toilet. Yeah. If you need to use it. And you, I, I, as I recall, I think you have a few, at least two. Yep. And we got the full, uh, they get a kick out of, we have the full uh, voice control artificial intelligence <clears throat> so we can say things. His name is Josh. So we, the office name is Josh he might turn on now actually. Um, but he'll start doing different sequences and shows, uh, based on music and lighting. So we actually bring clients into a room that's entirely dark and I'll say we have a new guest and all the lights will start coming on to blinding lights. Um, 
So in a minute and a half, I can demo the whole room without even talking. That's awesome, man. Well, I don't know if it was part of the plan back then or not, but uh, it's it's allowed you to expand. It's allowed you to grow. Um, I saw just this last week you were up in Nashville starting your third location. So can we talk about that a minute, a little bit? <clears throat> yeah. So starting locations, I get a lot of people ask me about that. And I don't know how you do it if you don't have the right people. Um, you can't just say, hey, I'm going to open in Albuquerque and I'm going to find somebody to run this and teach them over the phone kind of thing. So I really base it off of basically um, situations occurring. You know, Denver is my cousin. We have the branch out there in Denver, Colorado, and he's somebody I trust, knowledgeable. He's helped us install hundreds and hundreds of lights down here in Florida. Um, we can help him with designs here. And then Nashville happened when Aiden, who it was actually his very first job, started working for me about three and a half years ago. So he's a 22 year old kid moving out to Nashville with his parents, but I'm not a very big ageist is what I call it. You know, looking down on somebody because of their age. Cause I remember when I was that age, I could do more than 35 year olds. So he has the drive, he has the ability, he knows how to install. His real lacking is in the sales, which we don't sell things. We'll go back in a minute. Um, but that's only because he hasn't done it. So it's building his confidence and doing all that and aligning him with the right resources up there. And even just, we've been up there about two weeks. So we should be getting a major rock stars home already. Um, when I landed today, we actually got notification that we are going to be approved to a 22,000 square foot house up there and another smaller house already. So that's how we kind of get into the market is trying to figure out who we're going to align ourselves with, who we can trust, who it's worth it for, and who's going to be best for the clients that we don't even have yet as well. We don't want to just take on jobs that are not going to be good for anybody. Technical difficulties. Yeah, th that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. I mean, you, the, I love what you said that you, you have to have a the good team. You can't just be like, you know, I'm going to go open this location and I don't know how I'm going to do it. Like you already started with like these heroes, these people that could actually go do it, um, that you trust and that can actually go execute the plan. So, um, hey, by the way, if you guys, I think Olin was asking, uh, I think if you go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook and you can put in your name, um, I noticed if you if you like are tuning in from like one of the Facebook groups, it, it it's kind of weird it doesn't it says facebook user if you go and tune in from my profile from ryan lee or from youtube or something like that you don't have to put that in uh, otherwise you have to go to streamyard.com facebook so um that way your name will show up when you when you comment so by the way too guys if you have questions um i've got about 450 of them but if you have questions for greg uh put them in the in the chat there and uh i may ask them i may not i may not see it i may be like that's a dumb question i'm not asking it but you should at least try, you know? So, uh, in fact, Greg might see it and I might not want to ask it and he might just answer it. So, uh, if you want to be part of the discussion, just put that there. Um, I'm okay, a Virgo. So, what? I'm a Virgo. If, if anybody's oh, asking. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What does, what does a good date night look like to you? Oh my God. Craziness. I was kidding. <laughs> um, all right. So that's cool. So you're, you're two weeks from starting this new location and you've already got like, a uh, couple of like major, major opportunities. Um, so that's awesome, man. I think that's what it takes sometimes is people don't realize the amount of risk that you that goes into it. And yes, it's calculated risk, but you're still making moves. Seed, and that's, to me, a, a big differentiator between you and some of the other people out there. Yeah, I got to actually go. Uh, we ordered a brand new forerunner for up there. So I got to spend 40 grand on a forerunner in two weeks after it comes in as part of the initial thing. So it'll probably be an $80,000 investment just to get an option to partially do something. Maybe, you know, so if it doesn't go through, then it is a big deal. Yeah. Yep. There's no guarantees in this stuff. And, uh, the people that are making moves and succeeding are the ones making moves and succeeding because of that, that thing called risk. Um, it's no secret that you, I mean, you do these massive jobs, um, any any uh, that come to mind over the past year that you're like, oh, man, this was fun or this is a highlight. This was really cool. You want to talk about in the last year? Well, I sent you the link to one and um, it's actually it, it's a pretty cool project it's on Jupiter Island. So some other people live up there like Tiger Woods, um, Celine Dion used to live there. But we actually deal with the people that are wealthier than those people. I like the, the wealthier people that aren't as celebrity ish because they're a lot easier to work with. Um, but this is a different client down the road and very, very particular client in a good way. You know, she knows exactly what she wants. 
And this client is at the level where they could literally afford anybody in the world to do the work. So we're very proud to do something like this for this kind of client where we've been chosen to light a property. And of course they actually had an existing lighting design there. And first thing we get to do is rip that out because I don't like it and then go with our style and our design. And she paid us quite a bit of money to actually light the driveway. So lighting the driveway took about 140 lights to do the demo, but she paid us to do the demo and it would have stayed there. And once I did that, she basically gave me full reign over the rest of the yard. So we we're able to do whatever we wanted. We ended up with about 321 fixtures on this project. All right. I think it's showing now. It only took me 10 minutes. 321. Yeah. 321. Yes. Um, and this is the same client. So after we did this project, we did this probably March. So she came down and saw it. And that's why I was just in Wisconsin and Illinois to go like two more of our homes. So where they have existing lighting already, the property managers and all that were even like, why are you going to fly a guy up from Florida? We're out of Chicago. There's all these fancy lighting designers. And she said, no, Greg's going to do this. So we're able to go do these properties, even when there's competition around. Can, um, you, can you talk about how you, how you did that paid demo? that's a really weird situation because she was a client that wanted, I mean, she basically bought one section of my design to see if she would like it. Okay. Like, like if she, she would have kept them, you know, if she didn't like it. She paid me to put it in. So I would not suggest that for most that's, that was a tricky one to even do. But again, that, but that it was tens of thousands of dollars for this client. That's really nothing, but it still is something if that makes sense. But um, yeah, the other two properties that I walked, one is 68 acres in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and one is three and a half acres in Winneka, Illinois, which is the same neighborhood that like Home Alone House is in. So it's actually the largest plot of land in that whole city. Um, so I'm imagining probably it's going to be over a thousand fixtures on the two properties easily. And we'll be doing that. We'll start the design now and do the installation probably in the spring or summer of next year when it makes more sense. So it's one thing we don't have to deal with down here is winters. <laughs> yeah. Why are you going to the north, man? <laughs> you can only work eight months out of the year up there. Yeah. And while I was up there, I actually got a text. Somebody in North Carolina wants me to do their house. And um, we already have scheduled for next year, the Hamptons as well, outside of New York for a client that we've lit another home for. We actually lit two of his other homes in Florida. Okay. So I know this. Um, oh, what well, we got here I'll, before I ask my questions, um, Olin's asking if Greg's dealing with this level of clientele, I can assume non-disclosure agreements must be key here. So what's they are and they aren't like, I don't know if I've signed one in a very long time, but out of respect for clients, we don't talk about names too much. Um, we're doing a major celebrity's house and right now he's right near our office in West Palm beach. He's actually on Palm beach. And I'm going to ask his permission before we use his name on, you know, revealing the pictures, which are about a month out. But hopefully I'll actually be on his Instagram because he has a few hundred thousand followers. So nice. maybe doing the night walk through, I'll have him to put us on the, the thing. But we've done, you know, the owner of the Baltimore Ravens house. Um, we've done some NFL players. We've done celebrities. But again, my favorite clients are not um, high profile. But these particular clients here that we're looking at, too, they're great, excellent, very precise. But out of respect, I wouldn't talk about dollar money, you know, on here or anywhere else because there's no reason to. And it's really, you know, that's kind of a private aspect of this project. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, basically what I'm hearing you describe is momentum. So you get one project and that leads to another, which leads to another, which then they post on their socials and share with their friends. And and that's what you're going through right now is momentum. Um, I, everyone wants me to ask this. How the hell? Do you get started like how how do you get your first big job so that you can even get to the point where you start to get this momentum so i would say start with yourself um, a lot of those points you went over were kind of on key with what i believe in you know we don't sell anything we are designers and i have so much confidence in the products that we sell and what we do in our procedure and our process and the final outcome that it's at the verge of arrogance with a client and with this client, like I will fight for my design. I've been in pretty rough things with high profile clients to almost lose them saying, I won't do the job unless we do it my way kind of thing. 
um, and not to shove something down their throat, but because I've already spoken to them, I know how they utilize the house. I know what the house looks like. I know what the neighborhood looks like. I know the fixtures I'm going to use are, you know, every single client meeting that we go to, the client says, I don't want to look like Disney world. So I hear that on every single meeting. It's crazy. Yep. Which Disney world's landscape lighting sucks. So we don't do that anyways. Um, I know but, that's what I usually, I would used to say that like, Oh, I'm with you. I'm a I'm hundred percent with you. Don't worry. Yeah. We got Architectural lighting they do is great. Landscape lighting is horrible. Um, so, and then we back it up with pictures. So we have pictures like this, we have drone pictures. Um, and sometimes I'll show them how many pictures we've used to create that image, you know, saying, you know, the picture you're on right now is probably 20 fixtures. You know, some people would put three fixtures or two fixtures or whatever. Um, and I also say it's kind of cheesy and artsy, but, uh, light fixtures are like painting, you know, the more you have, it's like using brush strokes rather than throwing a bucket of paint on there with a single light source. So we're able to control that and do that better at a softer feeling with more fixtures. And it's not to sell more, it's just what you actually need. So <clears throat> by not selling anything, not, not ripping off the client and by having the full confidence, it's pretty easy to do when you get to that point. We have all of our projects we do, we photograph ourselves, we print. <clears throat> so when we show up at a meeting, there are other printed portfolio book Worst thing you can do is email pictures half the time. You pull that picture up on a monitor or a TV or a phone, they're gonna be three different colors and three different brightnesses. So it's not gonna look what you think it looks like. I hate emailing pictures. So we will physically, I've mailed portfolio books across the country or to, to potential clients. So they can see after I've edited and printed it, what it actually looks like and how I want it to look. So that control freak in me really does help out with those aspects. Um, we have great relationship with manufacturers. We're designing fixtures with some people. We, you know, we work with them and then we tie it in with other things like bringing in the, uh, the audio systems to create the full experience. This Saturday I have to go do a demo for, I think it's going to be a 10 acre property and they want audio everywhere. So it's going to be a six figure audio job just doing audio there. That's awesome, man. Well, I, I know we agree on the sales aspect. Like you're, you're not selling anything. You're just helping them get this stuff. And, and, and especially in your case, you're like, you're helping them get something that they didn't even know was possible. Um, but I'm not going to let you off the hook. Totally. I want to find out like, how do you get in with these referral partners? How, like what, who are you going after? How, like, what, what can someone say? What can someone do? But before you answer that, we're going to play the game. We're going to do the gift card giveaway. Are you guys ready? I think I'm ready. I don't even care if everyone's ready. <laughs> gift card giveaway. All right. It's everyone's favorite time of the show. Gift card giveaway. So all you have to do is be the first person to answer this correctly. Greg, you're not allowed to answer. And that's pretty much the only rule. So if you win, uh, we're going to hook you up with a gift card. We'll mail it to you and uh, you can go buy some stuff with it so all right um the, the 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 question this week actually the other day i was sitting in my hot tub and the moon was so bright i'm sitting out there it was a full moon i um it was on sunday i think was the full moon and uh it's still bright it's not full moon right now but it's still hella bright and i'm in the hot tub i literally felt like a spotlight was on me like have you have you had that where you're just like man this is like this i can't believe how bright this is um and i remember learning at some point i don't even remember when it was but that um, how bright the moon was in terms of foot candles. So that's the question. How many foot candles does a full moon produce? So if you can answer that question, how many foot candles does a full moon produce? By the way, I don't even know how I'm going to, um, I don't know how I'm going to give away this. Like, I think there's multiple correct answers depending on who you ask. So uh, let's see if we got some uh, people coming in. Uh, what did I even ask? Oh, how many foot candles does a full moon produce? All right. Uh, no one has gotten it correctly. <laughs> okay. I'm going to show this and you're going to regret it, Mike Long. Listen, I didn't tell. <laughs> just because I said the moon was bright doesn't mean it's a big number, guys. It's kind of a trick question. 
Um, we've got uh, 4250, we've got 20, we've got 10,000. Depends on the atmospheric conditions, six foot candles. Um, that's, closer. that's closer. I mean, I, there's some truth in there, but. Um, okay. This, uh, Olin, could you, could you clarify your answer in terms of non decimals? I can tell people are Googling now. Um, okay. We got, okay. So Wes says under 0.1. 0.015. We're we're getting some uh, we're getting some answers now. All right, so here's the deal, guys. Um, I actually was like, I thought I knew the answer, but I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna Google. Like we all use Google, right? So I, I Google right before the show, and I was like, what? You know, I I think I know what it is. I had heard it was one tenth of the uh, one tenth of a foot candle. Are you with me, Greg? Have you heard that? Like, what what number would you guess? Yeah, it's about one tenth of a foot candle because that's really. They have some, a lot of regulations that base it off of that. Yeah, like so helmet. I thought one-tenth. But if you do a Google search, you'll find 0.01, which I'm not I'm not a math genius, but isn't 0.01 one one-hundredth? Isn't 0.1 one-tenth? Yeah. I don't know. Like That's why I'm like, crap, why am I doing this question? Because I don't even know the answer. I think it's well, one-tenth. I'm, I'm going to go based off CL, the, the AOLP, CLVLT, I know they, and if you like want to answer that question correctly, if it's even a question, I can't even remember. It's one tenth of a foot candle. So um, we're going to give the answer to uh, Olin. Olin, you're, you are the winner. Um, but I think because he put 0.01, which is like not really right. <laughs> so I don't even know. So you asked him a question to get money away for that you don't know the answer to? Well, it's just that people online would say, oh, yeah, it's one-tenth of a foot candle or 0.01. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure 0.01 is not one-tenth. They're not math whizzes, okay? Yeah, I know. It's one-tenth. The answer is one-tenth, guys. So um, I don't know. I'm going to review the scenes. I'm going to see who posted. But I think um, I don't even know who won. I'm going to just give away some money. I'll, I'll, everyone just email me your address. <laughs> If you participated, all right. Except Mike Long, ten thousand. That's not even close, dude. <laughs> I'll be dead. All right. What is this? What did he say? Full sunlight with Zenith Sun produces an illuminance of about ten thousand foot candles on a horizontal surface. Full moonlight prov provides an illuminance of about 0 0.02 foot candles. Yeah, that's that's true according to someone on Google, but it's not going to help you pass the CLVLT, Mike. All right, we're gonna move on. Um, but here's what here's the point I want to make. And uh, yeah, I got to figure out how to like uh, come up with a winner. But most people completely overlight their projects. Now, I will say it depends on. There's a lot of different factors. Like things to consider would be other ambient light sources, so other properties nearby or existing lights or whatever. Um, what is the purpose of the area to be lit? You know, some some areas may require brighter lighting. Um, beam spread matters i noticed in those pictures i was scrolling through greg uh you use that to your advantage like you would narrow in some uh spots to kind of create a a pathway with light um maybe you want it softer edges for different applications to mimic the moonlight uh color temperature cri um the material that you're lighting they all affect the overall look so just be cautious i mean like i said i was just reminded i'm sitting in my hot tub i'm like damn that moon is bright and whether it's you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 1 tenth, doesn't really matter. It's not a lot of lumens is the point that you could see, like I could walk around my whole yard and not trip over anything. So anything you want to add there, Greg? Yeah, I would say age of client is a huge one because mm -hmm. as you get older, your retina degrades. So brightness to you is totally different than brightness to a 70 or 80 year old person. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I remember having clients where I'd light it and I'm like, doesn't this look amazing? And they're like, man, I, you know, I wish it was brighter. I'm like, oh crap. I forgot you were 92. Uh -huh. <laughs> that does come up for sure. So, um, you know, and you've got, you've got neighbors. Like I remember also doing other projects where, um, in, in Dallas, especially they had the old mercury vapor which had that like green tint to it, you know, and people just got used to it. So they thought that was like normal looking lighting. 
So we would go in and do this like nice 2700K or something. And they're like, well, I don't know. It just doesn't look like our neighbors. And I'm like, yeah, by design, like we're trying not to, but they got so used to that. So people see other projects that are sometimes overlit. They get used to that. So that's a mat. That's why I like what you do and how you do it is you show them pictures of your work and get them used to seeing what you want them to, to like, you know? And on that same note, I will, I gave into one client. She's a great, she's uh, very wealthy <clears throat> with two of their other houses. And then we did her house in Greenwich, Connecticut, which has a mile and a quarter of ocean front, like this magical estate. Wow. But because she was used to mercury vapor, she made me do it in 5,000 Kelvin. And I've never even photographed the property. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have day pictures of the property, but she's happy down here. We did normal, you know, proper lighting, 3000 Kelvin, 2700, but she wanted that to be 5,000 Kelvin and after mock-ups and everything. But again, I don't even have pictures and it's an amazing property. Yeah. Well, it's because they don't want to stand out. They want to like fit in with everyone, but then the problem is someone's going to end up doing 3k and then they're all going to want to go go to that eventually but it does take some time and not everyone's that that innovative they don't want to be the one that sticks out so all right let's go back to the question if like what what could someone do they're like man i would love to like you know get that client that leads to the next everything else but any suggestions on like <clears throat> how to how to form these partnerships how to how to go after these referral partners so most people we deal with who have high-end clients the professionals that we deal with at least really do care the most that the client is happy in the end. So I'll start back at have your stuff together. You know what I mean? When you're before you even meet this possible referral, possible in or whatever, what are you going to show them when you meet them? What are you going to tell them when you meet them? Do you have an answer for every single question before they even ask it? Um, so your knowledge, your expertise, your pictures, your portfolio, what you've done, will help you get into that first door. So you already have to do doors before you get to the first door. You know, it shouldn't be an easy thing because you're not going to know all the answers if you've gone the easy route. Um, and yeah, we use referral sources. We have architects, landscape architect, architects, AV installers, landscapers, um, family representatives, other clients. Like we have this huge web of people where a lot of these out of state projects were referrals from people that we haven't done even lighting for. Somebody just knew about us. So like a client in Indiana, um, we've done seven acres so far. We're doing the other three acres in spring. We had never done another one of their homes, but someone in Indiana knew us in the profession and said, Hey, you got to get Greg up here to design this and do this. So now we're doing that house and they happen to also buy another house down here, which is funny because a reverse phase back to our area. So there are other, his dad's house is going to be about 15 minutes from our office. But having all that stuff together when I flew up to a meeting and talking to him is what gets you in. Uh, we do things, you know, if you can do parties. Like I said, I had a full landscape architectural firm over here at the office, at the house. We bought him dinner, but the dinner was a small part. The big part was me showing him the showroom, walking him through fixtures. You're taking people's times up a profession. Um, so you better make it worth their time. You know, they can get wine and dine and booze anywhere else. But if they're good quality people, they want to actually get something out of it. They want their lives to be made easier. So they want to know that the client's going to be taken care of. And then we do things like allow them to use our pictures on their website, which allows their company to look better. And then the clients are happier with the final outcome of the project, which allows them to get more projects. Love it. So it's, That's yeah, it's not hard, really. I mean, it really isn't. And it's figuring out which one of those to do it. I mean, one landscape architect we're working with now, um, it's taken me about two and a half years to get in with them and they're finally accepting us and they're old school. So their designs are just throw up in your mouth. They're horrible. I mean, just absolutely horrible. So now they're finally accepting more of our designs as we wean them into it, but they have keys to the castles that we don't have to yet have yet. And the clients are happier with their work and they're finally seeing that, but it takes, you know, you can't just shove something down a professional throat, or override them and make them look bad. You know, it has to be in a respectful way. And I guess that's what I'm really good at is relationships and building and knowing when to talk and when to shut up. Um, you know, that's a big thing is when do you shut up sometimes? And then making other people look good through our work as well. That's very important. Man, that's awesome. I mean, really, really good stuff there. I love that you shared that one experience where it took you two and a half years to get in with someone because I, I literally can't tell you how many times I've talked to clients 
and they're like, oh, man, I don't I just can't get the referral partner thing to go get going. I'm like, oh, well, what have you done? Well, we called on, you know, we, we, we emailed 30 people or something, you know, or maybe they stopped by a couple and I'm like, well, OK, what else? You know, like it does take time every once in a while. You might get lucky that someone is looking for a, a lighting company and they do have a client right then. But more often than not, it's all about those relationships. So, um, and they do take time. Like, I guarantee you have more today than you did a year ago, and you had more a year ago than you did two years before. Like, it just keeps building upon itself. What, um, before you had the showroom, like, uh, the showroom's awesome. There's no doubt about that. But you were doing this stuff before that. Like, you would go into these landscape architects, take them lunch, you'd wine and dine yeah. them there. Um, obviously, you mentioned be prepared. Like, most people don't, they don't really have like a polished, sales presentation um they don't have the pictures they don't have like they haven't thought about okay what things are they going to ask me how am i going to over their, overcome their objections they just uh they don't think through that thing but uh, any advice on what they could do if they don't have a badass showroom like how could they get started uh calling on their first uh well, I mean, we, yeah we just got the showroom what last year um january was opening really um so we were doing millions of dollars out of a garage and that, so that's not really a requirement. It's helped us with certain things, but, um, yeah, learning your client's property, you know, we'll Google earth it before you go there. We'll look at it. We'll know the acreage kind of figure out how they use a property. Maybe you get the early walk the yard before they even get out there, come up with ideas. So listen to them, but then suggest things on the way. And that's what really sets you apart is you come up with an idea, a unique thing. Um, and again, just knowing what the hell you're talking about and making it happen, executing, not saying you're going to be six months out. I'd rather do fewer jobs that are bigger scale than doing a bunch of jobs and then having to run around to a bunch of places and service them. But again, it's also hard to do big jobs, too. You have to be careful jumping into a large project, um, installing three, four or five hundred fixtures and you start having issues. It's going to be a bad day for you. And, you know, you also know, got to know what fixtures you're putting in. And that you're not going to start having problems with those so that goes back to the products that you choose but it's just different different business mentality than doing lots of small jobs or medium jobs i would say a good sweet spot is going after like two to five million dollar houses for most people you know ours are our main clientele are between 10 and 70 million and there's only so many of those clients um but then when you're dealing that with those clients everything has to be perfect you can't just you know, channel through their driveway through it with a grinder and shove some caulking on top of it kind of thing. Um, if you break a rail, it might be from 1802 and it costs more than, you, you know, my showroom kind of thing. Um, you can't work all days there. You can't work all hours there. So it's a little bit different thing where you have to plan the things out. A lot of stuff we do ties into home automation control systems. So if you don't know how to talk that talk, as soon as you talk to the property manager or the electrician, you're already losing some credibility. Because they're getting worried that you won't, you know, you can put a light up and then how are you going to turn it on kind of thing. We don't use a lot of timers on those big properties. It's all controlled by something else. And we're not installing it, but at least we know how it works and can help them, you know, finalize the installation. Because it's like when you have a full TV system, you spend 20 grand on a, a DVD player, a stereo, all this. The only important part is the remote control that's in your hand and how it works. So with a lighting system, if you do it all and it doesn't work the way they want to do it, and with a bigger property, you may have seven, eight zones, then you may have to rewire the entire thing and you lost all credibility with that client as well. So those are other things you got to think about, talk about, suggest before you even start. Yeah, that's awesome. One tip I'll share uh, that helped me start to get into some of these referral partners was, you know, I was like, okay, I, I, I see these big jobs going on. Like, how do I get them? And I figured out, okay, it was through these relationships. Uh, but I like I would cold call some people and it would take longer than I wanted. So I just started asking my existing clients who I had a relationship with. I said, hey, we're really trying to do this. Uh, we're trying to grow our business. Who built the house? Who did your AV? Who did your landscape? Who did your pool? And that's an easy way in because they like you. They like them. And you can like, hey, would it be OK if I re reference your name? So when you call on them and say, hey, I got your number from Amy Smith, they're much more likely to call because they're like, wait, Amy's a good client of ours. Uh, I, I'm going to return that call. I'm not going to just like, who's Ryan Lee? Like no one cares about that, but Amy Smith or whoever that client is, they do. So you guys can just make literally a list of, of you can just write down on a piece of paper and go meet with your client and, and make a list of everyone that they know that they can introduce you to. 
Yeah, and we ask for those a lot. I think I have like one Google review, I believe. Not even maybe a Facebook review. I don't know. We don't really ask for those. Um, That's an improvement because you not have any. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe you write me one up later. But um, yeah, well, well, I'd rather ask for the referral for who they work with. Because like I said, they're going to call you back if you say Mrs. Smith referred you because they don't want you to say, hey, Mrs. Smith, you didn't call me back or whatever. It's going to make them look bad. Yeah. So that's a great way of doing it. I'd much rather have that referral than in, in my business model. You know, get your Google yeah. referrals. Yeah. And I love putting it on, on the, the homeowner too. Like it's all their idea. You know, it's like, you know what? Mrs. Smith asked me to reach out to you. She thought it would be a really good idea if we met for lunch. And yeah. I thought we could do some work together. That's completely different than like, I got your number from Mrs. Smith and here's what I want to do. I want you to sell, refer me jobs. You know, it's like, what? what? Like, no, I got to go. I'm too busy. So you can put everything on the homeowner and then things start to become easy. No, I've had, clients, that, yeah, I've had oh, clients call me directly in front of me or another client to give me another job and say, hey, you have to call him later. So it works that's awesome. Good. That's even better. Yeah. If they'll do the text or call and say, Hey, just, uh, I'm putting you on a text right now with him. That's awesome. You know, then, then, you know, you're in as long as you don't screw it up with the presentation or the design or the install, or you leave, you know, you cut something wrong or whatever, right. Then, then you gotta be, uh, good at what you do. Most of your stuff. I mean, all of it's low voltage, right? Yeah. So we're not certified electricians at all. So any line voltage we have done by the electrician on site, which would be like switch legs to our transformers. So we basically do everything off the transformer and yeah, we're running everything low voltage. Even, you know, we have one in Texas that we did and it's about 1200 fixtures so far. Um, but it's all low voltage. Um, what's the most, what's been the most challenging piece of the business for you? Figuring out where to eat every night. Um, when you're out of town, that's pretty hard. No, I'm just that's hard for you. Cause I was, I was going to no, ask you, follow up to that if you had to pick one meal to eat from any I, restaurant, so, the rest of your life yeah. what meal would it be so I, I i you can't really narrow it down to one because it depends on your mood but the, no, but the restaurant is actually your, your mood is yeah. what it is you just have to eat one like every right. every dinner from here on out doesn't matter if you're happy sad glad what would it oh, be oh that's rough um so the one we had in nashville the other night literally would be one of the top meals of my life really um because i eat I eat more A5 Kobe beef than most human beings on earth. And then they had a special cut of cow that they only kill two, two head of cattle a year. It's called like snow beef and they raise it like in the snow and all this kind of stuff. And I can't even explain the flavor. Um, it was really cheap, but um, it was just amazing. And then they, they have this uh, dish up there called lobster pot pie. It's basically a pot pie with a full lobster and then they reconstruct it on a plate with a pastry. And I could okay. probably eat that once a week you've had that before that you've had that before in nashville i think i did and yeah it's pretty addictive that's what i mean it's a meal that i went back to do okay. something very similar to but and then you got the snow beef. all right so we'll go with snow beef but uh but seriously from a business standpoint it seems like you said you, you you're you're good at this relationship thing is there something you're like man this kind of sucks or this this is like a challenge for me well, I mean, it, and see, my life seems all fun and good, but we do have issues just like everybody else. I mean, it's, it's all about delegation. Luckily, I have a great guy, Charles, who's with, been with me for years. Um, and we're still figuring out our real roles. You know, I think I'm going to turn, it's always been like this, but he'll really going to turn into a full operations manager. Um, it's scaling is always an issue, obviously, finding the right people to work for you. Um, luckily, we've been blessed with a lot of people that we have. Um, but I really should have probably four to six more employees already. Just I have really good employees that can get everything done already. Um, up in Wisconsin, it's interesting. We've never actually subcontracted anybody out on any of these out-of-state projects. But Mike Long, who was just on the show, he's actually 30 minutes away from both of those properties. And he's a guy I know and trust and does good work. So we're probably going to work together on those projects in some kind of aspect. But yeah, I'd say the real real proper real problems with the business are scaling, making sure the quality control is always there when you're doing so many things at so many times. Um, we keep our employees pretty happy in a good way, but that's always a, you know, a good balance on how much you work them compared to how much we play kind of thing. Um, but I think, I think it's the main issues. Everything else is pretty coming, coming together pretty well. Yeah. 
I mean, that's that's common problems amongst any growing business. It's just those growing pains and keeping people happy, your your clients and especially your team members and doing all that stuff. So um, I appreciate you, you know, being real with us because it, I mean, even for me, people like look at me like in a different light. And I'm like, dude, I'm a real person. Like I, I have struggles. I have crappy days. I've had shitty experiences in business. Like th those are all real things. We have successful days. We have those moments. But there's a lot of crap behind that that makes all those those good moments possible. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to coach anybody. But if anybody's looking for a job, let me know, you know, across yeah. the country. <laughs> um, well, yeah. And. Hey, if you know, like you said, you're you're considering partnering up with Mike on this opportunity. So um, if you guys get into a project and I know this happens where you're like, man, I want this to be my project. This is my, you know, hundred thousand dollar project or my one million dollar project or whatever. But if you feel like you're in over your head a little bit, just reach out to Greg and you guys can partner up on stuff. So um, don't feel like you have to go at it alone. Uh, what's the name of the restaurant? In Nashville, uh, Bourbon Steak. Bourbon Steak. I think it's actually rated one of the top ten restaurants in the United States recently. That one. There's one in Miami too, but uh, Bourbon Steak in Nashville. It's on the top of the JW Marriott. Okay. Well, if it's on this show, it's the number one in the world. So, yeah, it is with me right now. <laughs> uh, how many years under your belt installing and designing? Uh, Greg's got you've got a lot of experience just owning your own business prior to this in the AV world, but uh, with lighting specifically, how much? So lighting, we started in November 2015. So what is that? We're about seven years. Seven years. Yeah. And then so, you know, we I again, I jump kind of full force into everything. So I'm going to be a lead mentor at Illy um, coming up next month, which is going to be cool. So if anybody's going to that, we'll see them there. But that's that's a great thing I would suggest um for people really trying to become better designers so it's a week long of 14 hour days pretty much and half of its class work and half of its field work you get to play with hundreds of fixtures you meet some of the best lighting designers and um you know manufacturers and distributors and everything and they do it in different areas each year it's usually in texas and because a lot of the equipment's been there but this year it's gonna be in indiana but Illy, I think it's illyedu.org is something to really check out. It's like 5,000 or 6,000 bucks, but they really don't make much money off of that. It's probably, I think it's about four to five mentors per student. So you're just engulfed by knowledge. And if it's something I don't know, or he doesn't know, or she doesn't know, somebody else knows it kind of thing. And you get to and see what other people do. Mm -hmm. Who would you recommend go to that? Someone who's like brand new in the industry? Should they get a few years under their belt? Um, who, who would benefit the I, most? It depends on the person. I mean, I would um, do it earlier in my career so that I do it right to begin with. I mean, you don't want to go there and say, hey, what's a bullet like kind of thing, because it does go advanced. You might even do it a couple of times, honestly. But if you really want to become a better designer and learn how to sell, learn how to design more fixtures, um, that's what you'll do. Some trees we do out there and I've done them in real life, have 23 fixtures in an individual tree. And there was a reason for having 23 fixtures and it's beautiful. And then when you get back, you may not sell 23 fixtures in the tree to start with, but you'll probably sell five to seven compared to two. Um, and you'll understand the differences. But yeah, I would do it if you've been doing this about six months, I would go to the course. It fills up pretty quick. So that's also going to be a variable. I wouldn't wait too long. I know this one's already sold out, um, but they're doing it twice a year, I believe. But then I would do it again as you're further in, maybe. And it's a whole different experience each time. Who's your mentor? Who's your team? They have different speakers each time. It's just a different thing where it's very hardcore. And again, you get your money's worth out of your time, which is important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I mean, it's like your point. Like if you're like, okay, I'm going to do 23 fixtures. And then you're like, crap, I, I don't know how to sell that yet, but at least they're not two. I've got seven fixtures on it. Well, then you could do a year or two of business selling seven lights on trees, which is better than everybody else in the world. And then you go back and you're like, okay, actually we, now I just saw how to do it with 36 lights on a tree or something. And then all of a sudden you elevate your game even more because you're a transformed individual. You've experienced more uh, relationships and people and stuff like that. So that's awesome, man. Um, okay, man. Well, um, I guess the only thing else I want to ask you about, I know we're going a little bit long, but um, I think this is important. It's always, be, it's something that's become important for me over the years. 
Um, it seems like you have a pretty awesome work life balance. Um, even while going through all these growing pains and everything else, uh, what's been your key? Like has any secrets you can share with us, something that's helped you maintain that balance? Well, I mean, a huge shout out to my wife. Get some brownie points here real quick, you know, while I'm at it. Erica. Um, Erica. So it's great having a very cool, awesome wife and, um, and, great, <laughs> and, and great kids as well, because without that, it sucks to leave. And it does suck to leave. I mean, I have great times away from, but the family doesn't get to go all the time. But then when we go back into the install in spring or summer of next year, I'll take the whole family with us. And we can do a little lake trip up in Wisconsin and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, my wife and I are going to a great concert this weekend. The kids and all, we already planned out our Christmas vacation, which is paid for off of points that I, I got the points all accumulated through, uh, you know, the business. By the way, I have 109 nights earned so far with my Marriott Bonvoy account this year. So with bonuses and all, I have 109 nights this year so far, which is pretty crazy. That's um, great. But yeah, I, I think it's really the support. It's having fun doing what you do. Um, it's having the good team here to handle while I'm gone. Like when I walked in today, I saw the family. They picked me up from the airport. I came in here. There was no fires to put out. Uh, we can deal with stuff tomorrow, a few little things going on. But, you know, again, great team here. We got a new office manager for a few months, and she's been doing great. She's also helping to start out with designs kind of stuff to take some workload off of the other guys. And I think just really building that team slowly in a good way is one of the good ways to do it. And, yeah, when we plan it out, you know, like I said, when we do travel for work, we have a lot of fun. Mike and I went to – I think we tried seven different cheese curd places in Wisconsin – um <laughs> while we we're up there but then we also walked the properties we designed did all this um so get your stuff done and then have fun afterwards it's really not that hard nice cool man all right well if someone wants to get in touch with you wants to get in touch with luxury illumination what's the website what's the best way to get in touch with you um so we have a couple but easy one is greg g-r-e-g -E at luxury illumination.net or an easier website we set up is getlitli.com um and if you guys actually want to go there i have a Flickr account too maybe we can post it somewhere but that's where i keep a lot of our um lighting pictures it has more than even our website if people want to look through you know projects we've done um pick them apart whatever the other thing too i find funny online is everybody has an opinion on every project even if they weren't involved on it you know you don't know what the feedback was from that client why they did something a certain way why they added more or less so it's interesting to see um, different projects and different aspects for different clients. Awesome, man. All right, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you coming on and uh, sharing uh, so much valuable information, little golden nuggets, and uh, just appreciate you, man. Uh, look forward to seeing you the next time I get to hang out with you. Sounds good. I'll have to start driving Utah. Let's do it, man. All right, man. All right. Everybody, Thank thanks for uh, hanging out live. And uh, if you have any questions, just uh, post them in, here in the uh, – comments here and we'll be sure to answer them see you guys next week